uh, this interview is an interview with Emily Putz. Do I have it right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Emily Putz. <laughs> um, and we're going to start right away. Hey. Hi everyone, my name is Julie and I'm from the Saskatchewan Science Center. Today we'll be speaking with a special friend of the Saskatchewan Science Center and also a bird enthusiast. We have Emily Putz. Uh, welcome Emily, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for um, taking the time to let us talk to you about birds and their migration. Uh, first of all, Emily, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you work, and I guess why are you so excited about birds? Um, so I've always been interested in birds as far back as I can remember. We had a very bird friendly yard as a kid and I'd spend a lot of time out there watching our feeders and seeing their visitors. And birds just have so much personality, individual personality and their behaviors are so cool. So um, just as I grew, I became more interested in them and then I eventually pursued that for schooling. So I currently work for Nature Saskatchewan on their species at risk programming. Um, where we kind of um, help out the species and people that have them on their properties. So, Okay, that sounds yeah. awesome. Um, so we want to know a little bit more about bird migration. Um, where can we begin to learn about birds and how they migrate? Um, so the best way to learn about birds is actually to step out your door and kind of observe them um, outside. And um, that's a great activity you can do right now, even social distancing is just to um, take a walk and see what birds are visiting this time of year. Um, if you really kind of wanted to dig into more um, about migration itself, uh, the great thing about Saskatchewan is we have a lot of good knowledgeable people about the topic, so you can get a hold of them. Or um, you can visit the Last Mountain Bird Observatory, which is part of the National Migratory uh, Monitoring Network. And it's open to the public in the spring and fall, and you can get up close and personal with birds, help ban them, and that really helps learning about um, the population, how it's doing, and um, kind of where the birds are going. Um, it's closed right now for the spring, but hopefully it'll be open in the fall. So if anybody's interested in migration, that's the best place to go, I'd say. Okay, so why do birds migrate? Um, so it's a popular thing to do. So over half of North Americans uh, bird species actually migrate in one form or the other. Um, and they do it for mainly two reasons, um, to find a meal and to raise a family. So it's all about resources and where they are. Um, so birds in the spring will often um, head north following um, where the food is. So as insects become more abundant here and our plants start to produce grain and seed, um, there's a lot of food available up here. As well, there's a lot of space um, for them to spread out from their wintering flocks and kind of raise a family in good spots. And then once it gets colder um, in the fall, it takes more energy to stay warm and they need a lot of food for that, which um, they can find in the south better. So they head south where it's warmer and there's more food. So I heard that Saskatchewan is like a really good place um, or that birds really like to go to in migration. Um, why do birds travel so much through Saskatchewan? So Saskatchewan's a really special place actually um, because there's um, something called migratory flyways and that's the paths that birds fly up and down. Um, and Saskatchewan is the converging point for three really large uh, flyways. So um, it's kind of where we're situated and um, the resources we have for them. So we have a huge diversity of birds that come through Saskatchewan, the ones that head way up north um, to the Arctic. Uh, we have the boreal species, we're the last stopover for them. Um, we have the parkland species, and then we're also the tip of the Northern Great Plains. So we have all the grassland species that come here. Um, Saskatchewan, as I mentioned, is so great because we have a lot of food for them. Um, so we've got great stopover places where they can eat leftover grain or seed from the previous years. Um, and we've got a lot of really large uh, water bodies that um, have great shoreline for fuel up spots for waterfowl and shorebirds. Um, so for example, Kaplan Lake, um, that's one of the most important stopover places for shorebirds. In, in North America, and it supports a huge number of shorebirds because it can produce uh, the amount of brine shrimp um, to feed them all. So it's a great place to go in the spring if you're looking for migratory shorebirds. 
Well, that sounds so awesome to go and look for those birds. Um, so birds migrate a lot. Um, what kind of challenges might they face in their migration because they go so great distances? Um, so birds face a lot of challenges on migration, unfortunately, and most of them are human made. And the two biggest actually um, might surprise people. So the two biggest causes of birds um, dying as they migrate are actually windows and cats. Um, which are both man-made uh, challenges to them. So if you think of big glass windows, birds are already trying to um, navigate through chaotic cities with loud noises and tall buildings, and they just can't see the windows all the time. So it takes out a lot of birds, unfortunately. And cats actually kill billions of birds each year, including uh, many at-risk species. So um, the best thing we can do to help birds on migration is actually you can put up stickers on your windows to keep birds from hitting them and letting them see them a bit better. And if you have cats like I do, um, it's good to keep your cats indoors, uh, keep your cats safe and the birds safe. Um, other challenges birds might face uh, if there's big storms or habitat loss, it can kind of veer them off track to places that might not have the food available for their stopovers. And so um, they can face challenges just trying to get that fuel to keep going on their migration as they're traveling north. Okay, I heard that you can also put a bell on a cat to make it like scare the birds away. I'm not quite sure if that's true or not. Yeah, I know my cat these, doesn't like bells. <laughs> there's these big clown collars that you can put on your cat if they're outside so the birds can see them. <laughs> Okay, well, um, so out of all the birds that migrate through Saskatchewan, um, which one would you say, um, tell me a little bit more about the ones that might be at risk. You mentioned that there's a few that fly through Saskatchewan. Yeah, so um, Saskatchewan unfortunately has a lot of species at risk, um, some of which are birds. Um, so two of our most endangered species are actually birds. Um, people might be familiar with the burrowing owl or the piping plover. Um, so burrowing owls, they're both migratory species. So burrowing owls, um, they actually winter down in Texas and Mexico, and they leave um, late February to early March, and they're back up here kind of around now, so late April to May. Um, so they're a good one to watch out for. Uh, there's only about 300 of them left in Canada, and we, we uh, have half the population in Saskatchewan. So um, very, very endangered species. And piping plovers, they're another endangered species. They come all the way from the Gulf of Mexico. And they're kind of early mi um, migrators, so they are already back. The males come back a little early, late April to early, early May. And um, we host about 30% of the entire world's breeding population here, so they're pretty cool. And um, another one people might be familiar with that you can watch out for just right in your house, um, are barn swallows. So most people don't know barn swallows are a listed species. Um, their population has declined by 80%. So um, they're a good species to look out for because Saskatchewan has a lot of them. So it's good to give them space if they decide to choose your house as a nesting spot, even if they're swoopy. Yeah, sometimes yeah. they can get like that. <laughs> Uh, so you talked about like the different species and how they're classified or um, put on different lists. Can you tell me a little bit more about the different um, classifications like threatened or endangered or extirpated? What do those all mean? Yeah, so um, if you're an at-risk species, it means you're either um, listed as special concern, which is the lowest risk category, threatened or endangered. Um, so threatened is where we really need to start looking at the challenges that these um, species are facing and kind of help them out. And endangered is kind of like that point we don't want to reach. So that's when it's um, they're at imminent threat of disappearing or being um, extirpated. So um, extirpated is kind of the worst case scenario. Um, so if people know what extinct means, that means there's no more of the species. Extirpated means that they're extinct in an area. So for example, if burrowing owls, um, if they disappeared from Canada, they'd be extirpated here um, because there are still burrowing owls in the US and South America, um, but there wouldn't be any more in Canada, so they'd be extirpated. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so what, out of the birds that you know and the birds that you're familiar with, um, which bird do you think has the most amazing migration story? 
Um, so there's this little shorebird uh, called a sanderling. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned them before, but they actually, they have an amazing migration story that I kind of think is super cool. So they actually breed uh, way up um, in the Arctic, Canadian Arctic, um, against the Arctic Ocean. And they migrate, that's where they breed in the summer, and they migrate all the way down to the very south tip of South America. So they basically travel pole to pole, and um, that's a huge way for such a little bird. And um, the cool thing about them is they do it so successfully. Um, like, Sunderlings, their population's doing really well, and it's just, like, amazing that such a little bird can make such a big journey. So, I don't know, they hold a special place in my heart, I guess. Yeah, that sounds, yeah. that sounds so amazing. Um, so what are some of the other things that um, we can do um, to learn more about birds and migration? Um, so the best way, as I mentioned, to learn about birds is to get out and um, look for them um, and kind of spend time just watching them, watching their behaviors. Um, it's really fun to do when you start learning how to ID different birds. Um, and Saskatchewan is a great place to do it. So you can go to some of the quieter parks, um, get away from um, some people and just watch the birds there. Um, or you can go down uh, grid roads and drive. That's a great way to see kind of the hawks, um, hawk species and uh, some of the grassland species is just to drive down some of those um, more secluded grid roads. So best way to learn about birds is always to get out and start watching them, I'd say. Awesome. So is there anything else that you want to tell us about birds and, and their migration? Um, <laughs> I, I just, I'm always amazed by, by birds. They're just, they each have their own personality and you learn something new about them every time you see one. So um, it's something that I suggest everybody uh, get out and do um, and get interested in. Um, especially in the spring when we've been cooked up all winter, the birds are returning and it's just, it makes you so happy to get out and see them and see what they're doing. Okay, well, thank you so much, Emily, for um, telling us a little bit more about birds and all the really amazing things that they do, especially the, the migration journey. That's always so amazing that such a small bird can travel such a, a distance. Um, and definitely I'll be getting out um, in my backyard and observing some birds that I see in my neighborhood. So thank you very much, Emily. Yeah, thank you.